sixth grade Bobcats. Welcome back to another great week at the Helena Middle School. Um, this week, I'm going to be talking about, actually the next couple weeks, I'm going to be talking about characteristics of respectful friendships, healthy friendships. Um, last year, I did a school-wide poll as one of the Bob, uh, or the Jelly Bean Question of the Weeks, and I got input from all of our student bodies because I wanted 11 to 14-year-old input on what makes a good friendship, what characteristics are you looking for. And so I compiled the top 20 answers, and I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about those today. Um, so many times we fail to realize that being a friend is an art, it's a skill, and um, instead of talking about how to be respectful, maybe we need to spend more time talking about characteristics of how to improve your friendships, because friendships are so important, relationships are so important, we are human beings, we strive for connectedness, um, we strive to have healthy relationships, and so I'm going to give you guys the next couple weeks the 20 top skills for that. So let's get rocking and rolling on this. Go out and make it a great week at the Helena Middle School. Right. As I mentioned, this week's Bob lesson is going to be characteristics of healthy friendships. But first, let's be our best this week at HMS. Let's be safe, let's be responsible, let's be respectful, and let's be a learner. Oh, and if you're in Mr. Kepler's advisor, let's be an artiste. All right, well, I compiled you guys' list, and thank you guys for doing that. This was so awesome. Um, I was able to compile the ideas that you left me in the Bob box in the counseling office, and some of you had some outstanding comments there, um, and I was able to compile <clears throat> the top 20, and I added a few in of my own, and we came up with a list, and for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about these friendship characteristics. So the first one, and this was probably the one that I saw the most. Of course, it's tr trustworthiness or, or can you be trusted. Trustworthiness is the ability to be relied on for something important. This could be something that is secretive, private, or sensitive in nature. A lot of times if you have friends, you want to confide in them. But you're not going to confide in them if you can't trust that they are going to keep that between you and them. If you can't be trusted as a friend, you may as well be a stranger. That's probably the number one characteristic of friendship that I found was so many of you put trust, trustworthiness down. Trustworthiness was probably the most popular answer in the Bob Box I received, meaning it's it's pretty easy to say it's a it's a prerequisite for virtually every person in this school when when they're looking at friendship. And the other thing about trustworthiness that I think is very important to think about is it has to be earned over time. When you meet somebody new, maybe for some of you sixth graders, when you uh, met somebody from a different school for the first time and you had lunch with them at their table, it took a while. You didn't really know who they were. Um, it takes time to earn trustworthiness. And and that, that takes time to develop, and it, and it happens over time. It's not going to happen overnight. You have to prove yourself over time that, hey, I'm somebody that can be trusted. And conversely, once that trust is lost, it's very difficult to get it back. Okay, So trustworthiness was probably the number one answer when I was asking about characteristics for friendship. Let's go on to number two, honesty. Being honest is a huge component to friendships and can be tricky at times, and I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. Honesty is also a huge component in building trustworthiness. Okay, In order to be and to build trust in friendships, you have to be honest with those around you, um, especially with your friends. If you can't be honest with your friends, then you know if you think about it, who can you be honest with? Sometimes being honest is difficult because you don't want to hurt a friend's feelings. And this is probably the trickiest thing when I'm working with kids, when I'm hearing stories, is a lot of kids have problems navigating um, what can be kind of a pitfall and honest. We, we want to be honest with our friends, and our friends want us to be honest with them. But what do we do when when the the truth is, isn't a glamorous or a, an easy thing to communicate. Um, and I'm going to give you guys an example here. Um, I recommend using a sandwich or an Oreo statement, some of you call it. Um, this is a great way to do this. Let's, let's pretend that um, I was walking down the hallway one day and, um, or I was in my counseling office and I, and I bought a new shirt. And I said to Miss Pandas, Miss Pandas, what do you think of my shirt? I just bought it yesterday. And let's pretend Miss Pandas honestly does not like my shirt. Maybe it's some weird color of orange. Um, maybe it's an Oregon State shirt that I wear all the time, and she really doesn't like it. But but Miss Pandas is not only my colleague, but she's my friend, so she doesn't know what to do. Well, 
In the sandwich statement, we start with something positive. Well, Mr. Flato, she might say, you're always pretty fashionable. You, you dress pretty nice. You dress professionally. Um, I don't know. That shirt really isn't my style or, or something I would wear. But you know what, Mr. Flato? I think it looks pretty good on you. Well, that would be an example of how she could be honest with me, but she could, she could also do it without hurting my feelings. Okay, so when we got to be honest with friends, and sometimes it's not an easy thing to say, think about using a sandwich or an Oreo statement. You start with something positive, okay, and then you kind of give them the, the ugly truth or whatever it is that's tough, and then you finish it off with something positive. So a little tip there about honesty. All right, folks, quick question for you in your classrooms. I have here a glass of water. And let's pretend that this glass of water is, the glass holds 16 ounces, okay? Now, let's also pretend that this glass has 8 ounces of water in it, okay? So, I have a question for you, and I want you to just think about it to yourself. Is this glass half empty, or is this glass half full? Okay, maybe real quick, if you think this glass is half empty, please raise your hand right now. All right, if you think this glass is half full, I want you to raise your hand right now. Okay, now, I know that we are all in middle school, and we all know that the answer is both, because the glass holds 16 ounces, we have 8 ounces of water, 8 is exactly half of 16, so the answer is both full, half full, and half empty. Okay, but I'm not getting at that. We're talking about friendships today. Okay? And unfortunately, there are so many negatives and sad things everywhere in life. You look around and, and you can find it. Get on the internet, get on Facebook, get on um, the news, and, and there's, there's, there's just tough information out there everywhere. Okay? When we think of good friends, we don't think of somebody that brings us down every day. We think of someone that is fun and positive to be around. Think about it. You want to be around people that are fun and positive. That's who you want to surround yourself with if you're a fun and positive person. Uh, I've never seen people that pick out friends and I say, well, why are you friends with um, Mariah or why are you friends with Sally or why are you friends with Michael? Oh, because they're they're pretty negative and gloomy. I, I never hear that. It's It's why are you friends with these people? Because they're fun and positive to be around. Okay? We're talking about half full, glass half full type of people. Friends who are fun and positive to be around tend to be more enjoyable to hang out and associate with. So, and this is kind of an overall attitude about life, okay? We can look at things in so many different ways in life. I'm encouraging all of you in your friendships and just in your everyday life, be a glass half full type of person. All right, and we're on to our fourth one, which is loyalty. And loyalty was another one that was probably one of the most important characteristics from the feedback that I got from you guys. And, and I think it should be right up there. Loyalty is defined as giving or showing firm and constant support or allegiance to a person or an institution. Okay? When someone is loyal, it helps build trustworthiness. And remember, trustworthiness was probably the number one answer that I got from you guys. Loyalty is important because it shows, quote unquote, who has your back. And I know that's slang, and I got a funny picture down here of that. Um, when times get tougher, when you need friends to lean on. Look, our friends should be there for us. Okay, and, and part of a huge characteristic of friendship is loyalty is can I depend on them for being there. I heard a lot of you say um, dependability, and what dependability really is is loyalty. It's that firm and constant support. I know that person is going to be there. I know that person has my back. I know that person isn't going to be talking, talking trash or talking smack or spreading rumors or spreading gossip behind my back. If I'm not there, they're going to be speaking positive words of affirmation about me. And I have a couple little pictures down here that I thought were cool. We'll start with the one on the left. Loyalty isn't gray. We're talking about gray. We're not talking about color. We're talking about a metaphor. We're not talking somewhere in the middle. The middle. We're talking that, that loyalty is black or white. It's either there or not. You're either loyal completely or loyal or you're not loyal at all. And people have to understand this. You can't be loyal only when it's convenient from you. 
Okay, I can say that all my top friends, all my friends that are in my inner inner circle, um, they're there because they're loyal and they've proven that over the years. Another thing about loyalty doesn't happen overnight. Um, it's something that we got to work for all the time. And in the bottom right, I think this is pretty funny. It says, I've got your back and a couple stick figures. Um, thank you to Mr. Kepler's art class to their advisor that graded my last stick figures as a C minus. I will take that all day long to the bank. Thank you, Mr. Kepler's advisor. All right, and the fifth one and the last one we're going to discuss today is, of course, respectful. I saw this one a lot. Um, top friendship characteristics, a lot of people put they have to be respectful. And this shouldn't come as a shock to anyone. It's one of our universals here at HMS and for a good reason. Um, when I talk about being respectful, I, I think it's my favorite and most important in my eyes. They're all important, but I think being respectful is the most important universal. Um, because no matter who you come in contact with in life, no matter who you associate with in life, you have to be respectful to people. If you're not respectful, you're not going to get too far in life. And healthy friendships, of course, fit into this category. Healthy friendships are built on people being respectful to one another. If you're disrespectful to your friends, you may not have those friends for very long. Um, if you're disrespectful in general, you may find it challenging to find people who want to be friends with you. Okay, so being respectful is something that we should shoot for all across the board to every person we come in contact with, whether we like them or not, and we have to be extra respectful to those people that, that are our friends or we might not have them for long. This week's Jelly Bean Question of the Week winners were, this one must have been easy, I had a lot of answers, and I have a lot of answers with no names on them or first names, last initial, I can't use that folks, get your full name on there. Except for Daniels, Jason Mandy, Emily Hines. Eva Santos and Kylie May. Great job, everyone. This week's Jelly Bean Question of the Week is, I'm tall at the beginning of my life and short at the end. What am I? And this is not Benjamin Button for those of you that have seen that movie. All right, 6th grade Bobcats, let's go out and make it a great week.